the Street Techs Mastermind. I'm always going to begin by sharing um, or having you guys share about any wins that you've had over this last week since the last Mastermind or maybe since you've last attended a Mastermind. Um, and then we're going to get into it today and I'm going to feature Janky Patel. Uh, she doesn't get to come to our Masterminds every week, so it's special when she does. Um, and we're just going to highlight some of her follow-up, um, specifically ISA process. But don't feel like it's just for ISA process. She's going to go over a little bit for you newbies too and what to consider um, you know, not just for that part of scaling and leveraging your business, but also if you're brand new, just getting started, you're like, shoot, I can only afford 10 bucks a day on Facebook. Maybe not even that. Um, so we'll get some good conversation going around that. But first things first, who's got some shares? Who's got some wins? I'm going to open up the mic. I'm starting to get some traction with street techs now. I've got several in the pipeline who are ready to either, uh, most of them are some of the buyer leads that are starting to pop up uh, who may have homes to sell also. So that is starting to produce results after about 30 days now. Nice. Okay. So um, you want to go a little bit deeper into that? Like when you, what does that mean? Yeah, I've, I've got one that I'm working with right now, or actually several of them I'm working with right now that have come in on my custom ad for ranch homes. And it is producing what I thought it would, people who are double-sided deals, uh, people who are typically seniors who are downsizing, looking for their final home. And so we're starting to get them in the pipeline. They're wanting to go out and see homes. And some of them have homes to sell. Others have already sold and are still looking to buy. But they're buying at more fluent price points. So it has definitely done what I wanted it to do. Awesome. Awesome. And Campbell, I know you're working with Janky, aren't you? I'm working with Janky and you're my coach. So yeah, we're all, our, actually our ISA is on with Janky today at 3.30 and I'm on with you Janky at one o'clock with a set webinar you're doing then because I want to keep learning about the virtual. Because I Okay, well, let's stop right here because since you were on that, that subject, you went to that first ISA session. Yeah, I attended it with Janky. She, she said we don't need to be there all the time, but I did want to kind of get the feel of what's going on with our new ISA. Uh, Janky and you, Marcus, you also hooked us up with this whole thing with the Virtue Desk folks. And we got our first ISA uh, hired. Her name is Maria. She is getting up to speed quickly. She is making phone calls now. Uh, she had power outages yesterday. And I had an outage today in Atlanta, of all places, and been without power for an hour and a half. I mean, no warning, no nothing. I mean, power out, and there was no flicker. It was just gone. So you know a major line got cut. Uh, but uh, she's getting up to speed and very pleased with what Janky's uh, doing, training them. Can't wait to see what's going to happen at the end of 12 weeks for this. Awesome. What's your one highlight that you learned from that session? The power of leverage of being able to have somebody else do the work for you. And like Janky said to all of us agents, she said, you don't need to be here. You can watch the rebroadcast. You need to go be working either on your business or in your business. You don't need to be here watching me train them. That's what you're paying me for. And it was point taken. And I may watch the replay. I may never watch them. I'm just going to see what the ISA is able to do. Campbell, what do you say to people that are not quite there? They're doing everything themselves. They really want to get to where you are and hire an ISA, but they're just starting. How, do, how would you approach that? Marcus, we, we had to make a, a quality of life decision. Honest to God, we, we didn't have the ton of extra money to put in, but with where we're at right now, we have more leads than what I'm capable of working on a daily basis. I'm magic. I've made a million plus phone calls over my career in sales because I've been in uh, sales since I was 21 and I'm 58. So I've made a million phone calls, but I can't make them all. And no matter how good I am, it's still limited to just what I can do. And so I had to look at leveraging. And when I heard the success that other people were having, and now I hear Tristan has done most of his stuff uh, with people from overseas also for growing his team for the backside, you know, it's just made me very confident because I trust Tristan and Tristan was the one that opened up the door to you guys and to Jonky. And that's where a lot of it got started was with lab codes. Cause I started with Tristan years ago when they first started lab, uh, lab coach, same as Jonky, we were with KW. So we met him at one of our conventions and it was just a brand new concept. I think they were less than a year old when we first met him. It's awesome. Anybody have any questions? I mean, this is obviously uh, we can go down the rabbit hole pretty fast here. Um, 
So no, uh, but I, I'm a, I am going to throw this in about your ISA thing. What you want to do is while you don't need to sit there for all the training, you do need to sit down and be familiar with what it is they're doing because when you're doing the responsibilities and follow-ups and stuff like that, if you don't know what it is that they're supposed to be doing, then you're not managing their time effectively either and you're losing productivity. So don't just get an ISA and send them in there and just like, hey, send them in to play, coach. You do need to understand what's laid out because when you do your checklist, you're laying out the responsibilities, what they're supposed to do, you got to know that they're actually doing it. And there's nothing worse than trying to tell somebody what to do if you don't know what they're supposed to be doing. Leon, I will echo what you said. I spent the whole entire last week with my ISA online doing training. Minus what Jockey did for for. 45 minutes or an hour. I have been with her for probably 38 hours training her on what I want her to do, working with scripts, role playing, having her listen to me make phone calls, me listening to her make phone calls. And so you are absolutely correct. You can't put somebody on a job if you don't train them. You can't expect them to perform if they don't know what's expected or get the training. That's why also the in that, you know, when people worry about the cost in that first month, you don't know if it's good fit or not, but it isn't. The first week or two of stumbling out the gates. And I can't hear you. We just lost you, Leon. You you separated from us. Probably got but he went from the car to the headset and hadn't made the transition yet. Hasn't transitioned to you, Leon. I don't know if you can hear us. He's just still talking. Um, Jakey, what, there's a question in there. It says, is Jakey just trading Virtue Desk members or are there other ISAs from various companies eligible? Um, hey guys, hello everybody. Um, so no, I'm tra I'm training anyone that needs my help. Basically, even realtors are on this. Um, I know Brandy is. I don't know if you see it, but she is going to be the ISA for her business. So she's going to be doing it. So it doesn't have to be an ISA. It, it could be anyone that needs help with lead conversions, lead generation, lead follow up. We have a follow up a new follow-up training course coming up, mini course coming up very soon, because I had a lot of requests over the weekend saying, hey, we would love to have a, a follow-up. What are your follow-up systems? So we're putting everything into play right now with my director of ops and getting that going as well. So stay tuned for follow-ups, um, you know, mini courses coming up very soon. Um, it's all driven towards your 2022 goals, guys, you know, whatever your business goals are, we're trying to drive you closer to getting ready for those business goals for next year. Awesome. All right. Well, let's just open this up. It's 915. So let's unless anybody has some shares that they'd like to start with, let's just open it up to to you, Janky, and tell us a little bit about, you know, really, I, I think ultimately what you're going to realize today is that the audience you have in front of you is an audience that you know, maybe are looking to scale and leverage, but also, Janky, there are people here that are just getting started. Um, there are people here that are trying to figure out where they should invest their marketing and advertising money. They don't have much to, to work with. Maybe they have $5 a day, maybe they have 10, I don't know. Um, they're trying to make decisions right now on how to maximize every single dollar they spend so they can drive and create more relationships. So there's a lot of people that want to get to this this place of success. And when I say success, guys, I'm talking about 50 how many deals now since march of 2020 from facebook i believe 57 right now we're pending on seven um plus we have i don't know how many uh i know lorraine my director of ops is here she can tell you how many more we're working with and getting them into pre-approval phases and getting their homes ready for the market so uh, i i have no idea how many more that are just in the pipeline but we're pending on um 7th october 10 for november Okay, and this and this is in an average of a one point three million dollar market. Yeah, one point. I would say between one two five zero and one three. Okay, this is Northern California, everybody. So, and in FYI, she's at a place now where she's probably you're probably spending about forty bucks a day on Facebook right now. Yes. So numbers. I know that Wendy. I love your numbers, by the way. That was so awesome. That uh, you know, I actually told my I, my uh, director of ops that's share our numbers as well. We haven't put it all together yet, but so far we're spending 20 on our Facebook buyer ad. You guys don't have to, I'm telling you, street text is so simple, plug and go, plug and go. And listen, I don't get paid by street text or anything like that, neither do I want to, but I am here really just to give a testimonial about SD leads. 
that they really do work. And the main thing is you got to build your systems, your tools, your technology, and the leverage piece to make it really happen. But you don't have to do it all right now. I'm talking to all the agents. I know Leon will agree with me and so will Wendy, so will Jennifer, all of them who have been successful here, they will all agree with me that, um, uh, and many of you probably are, I just don't know you, that you know, you start slow and you start steady. And then when you start slowly um, and steadily and you focus and you have a system and you have one hour of lead generation or two hours of lead generation, lead follow-up that you do, things will fall into place, but you have to have that system. And that's what Campbell and Brandy and um, the others are there uh, to, and Logan and a couple of other people that are there in my training course, my ISA training course, they are setting their ISA, I get it but they don't have to have an ISA. They can be there if they want to, or they can be at the level where Campbell is like, listen, I don't need the training. Um, I need my ISA to be trained, right? So you could be a new agent for a street text, all new here. Um, but if you're getting so many leads and getting overwhelmed, like I did once upon a time, which I still do too, but I don't look at it as much. My director of ops pushes me out of the, the system saying, go, you need to work on the business. You need to write um, you know, your courses. So you need to, if you are that one person that is like, I'm getting overwhelmed, I don't know what to do. And I know a few of you guys texted me. Um, first thing is figure out a system. Now, don't waste your time in figuring out a system, right? If you cannot figure out a system, don't waste too much time on it. Plug and play, like Campbell said, hey, I just want to copy everything you have and, you know, implement it on my business, it, towards my business here. So that's where the ISA training will come in. So it's not that you have to build. If you cannot think of building and how to build, the system is already created for you. You take it, you run with it. Hey, that's Jenny, what I suggest. I think what a lot of people don't realize, and I'm just going to share real quickly, is that I don't see a whole lot of seller ads going on in, in no. your background. I see Parkmont Homes with main floor master list. I, I've seen you keep that on and spent, you know, a couple grand there, six grand on this Fremont Homes list. So you've kept it on for a long, long time. Um, and then you've had this Fremont Homes with the main floor master list. So kind of explain the psychology behind why you're running these buyer ads as opposed to, you know, what most people here probably are used to the what's your home really worth ad. Oh, you got to unmute yourself there. Sorry, we're all taught to run after sellers. Listings, listings, listings is the, the you know, listings is a, is the thing here in our business. Yes, listings, if you are a listing agent, phenomenal. You're forgetting one key, important key component to this business is the buyers will one day become sellers as well. So if you are a new agent here, or you've been in this business long, you will realize that you need to work with buyers in order to get to those listings, right? Buyers might have a one bedroom or two bedroom condo townhome that they need to sell. And how do you sell it to them? I mean, how do you sell it for them? A lot of Campbell's leads also are coming. He just mentioned earlier, they're coming from the buy side, which I know uh, um, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about that. We said, he asked me, he actually spent 45 minutes to an hour on the phone with me and said, okay, what kind of leads are you running? Uh, ads are you running? And I said, listen, I don't mess around with those ads. My director of ops looks at it every maybe two days, three days. We just look at the numbers and that's it. We do not mess around with those, those ads, uh, Marcus. We leave it alone. We're getting a lot of business generated from the buy side. We convert those buyers and they have a property two, three uh, here or out of state, you know, and it, it's a win-win. Yeah. Linnea, I know you had a, some experience with that too, with the buyer side. Hey, you ran a buyer ad and found out they're sellers. Yeah, I got, um, I got two appointments just from the buyer ads and, and, com and conversing and conver conversating, con conversing with them, <laughs> um, learned that they also have homes to sell. So, uh, right now, I mean, I've got all my seller funnels done, but I'm like this week I'm focused on just getting that buyer to seller funnel that basically buyer funnel done. So I would agree with Jenki. I think that even Sarah can attest to the buyer ads. Um, they produce much higher quality as far as uh, people actually wanting to answer the phone, people actually wanting to talk. They realize they, they remember they signed up for something. Whereas a lot of the, what's my home worth. They're like, Oh, I don't remember doing that. I asked her, I didn't, I didn't ask for my home value, but the buyer ads they're, they're remembering. And it's, it's like more like the list ad too so mm -hmm. yes and and so what was that buyer ad that you were running and notice the mental shift here guys because you so want to to leverage your seller leads i get it 
We're in a hot seller market. You have to first take that mental shift and start saying, you know what? Maybe I should go into this buyer side. And I'll find out that these guys are be better conversation beginners. And with that, you'll be able to actually turn them into sellers. Just a thought. Ease your conversations. Right? And sometimes what I found out, like at least three to four times more leads for the same dollar you're spending in some cases. Can I jump on that, Marcus, really quick? Yeah. Yeah. In the mindset shift. So I'm in the same market as Linnea. And one thing that like that's easier with, with my mindset when it comes to buying is everybody here knows that we're going to sell their house in three days. Like they don't need a ton of education because most houses, if it looks good, it's going to sell. With that being said, they have no freaking idea where they're going to move, how they're going to do it. So it takes a lot longer and they need a lot more help and a lot more information. And those list ads are really helpful for what I've seen so far anyway, because like they don't, I, they know that they can sell their house. They don't know what's available in certain areas because there just still isn't a ton of inventory. So that's been helpful too. Sorry, Great if I don't, time. if I could jump on that too, I'm in an area on Vancouver Island in BC, Canada, like a small little town. And on average, since 1990, we've carried uh, 1,200 to 1,500 listings at any given time in our small little town. Right now, we're sitting below 150 listings. It's crazy. So for me, I'm, I want to do the buyer ads, but at the same time, there's such a shortage. Like there's nothing to show people. There are, I've got probably 20 buyers that want to buy up to a million dollars. We can't find them a single <clears throat> home to purchase, right? Go ahead, Janky. Okay, Kim, I'm so excited to tell you. Do you do circle prospecting? Do I do which? Circle prospecting. No, I don't know what that means. Okay. All right. So that is a good problem to have. Okay. When you don't have enough um, homes on the market, right? Inventory is low and you have the buyer leads, right? So what I do is I, we, our ISAs do, is they do circle prospecting. Hey, um, I have a buyer looking for a three bedroom, two bath. We even send out letters. We even do video bomb bomb videos to say, Hey, um, you know, we have a buyer looking in your neighborhood. When is a good time for me to drop by and take a look at your home and see if it's a perfect match. I'm not trying to list your home for you. I just want to show it to my buyers. If you are interested in selling. That I would love as well. I would love to do the circle prospecting, but where I run into the issue is that it has to be on me. It can't be with the ISA because I ran into issues with our, our real estate board and that's against the rules to have the ISA contact people, um, you know, trying to get new business. Whereas they're allowed to contact my street text contacts that have already given me permission to contact them. So that's, that's something I have to take into account. How about, sending them or door knocking or sending them a piece of mail or a postcard or anything uh, in, in front of the postcard to say, I have buyers looking in your neighborhood. They don't have yeah. to do anything, but with big bold letters, just put that out there. Yeah. I do farm like two different areas yeah. that I send postcards to regularly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That really works well for us too. Yeah. Thank you for the ideas. I really appreciate it. I'm going to throw something out there real quick. Um, you know, everybody worries about cost. And I always say when it comes to a task, if it's a $10 an hour task or cheaper, let someone else do it. And everybody's saying, well, where's the money come from? Where's the money come from? Number one, if you're not reinvesting in your business, you're not treating this like a business. So it's not like you're going to get off the meeting today and just jump on in, in a thing. You might go see, you know, what, what it is to feel out the process. But what you do is when you have a closing coming up, just a lot the money to the side for that and then what you have to remember is you spent the money so when it happens jump on it and do it you hit the ground running if you're going to go get an isa you go ahead get them to the training you should already have a database to get them working so you are pressing right off the bat to get a return on your investment but you have to be willing to invest in yourself to to get anything from it words of wisdom leon so janky Go ahead, unmute yourself and give us a little bit more on, you know, kind of the, the ISA process and or just specifically the follow-up. You can kind of take the floor here. Um, so basically in our ISA process, we uh, I built up a system to where we have 12 modules. And again, please be very clear that it's not, I'm not trying to sell this to you guys. I'm just trying to give you, um, you know, the processes. So maybe you can apply it to your 
um, you know, your systems, you can plug and play. Um, so we have about 12 modules. And in, the, in those modules, we talk about, um, you know, the, the CRM flow, the workflow flow. Um, we talk about, um, we um, uh, talk about role play and scripts. Um, there's a module for role play and scripts. There's a, first we start off with mindset, right? Where is your mind at, at the moment? And we really encourage whoever's making those phone calls to be in a positive mindset. Um, have they done their affirmations? That's the first conversation I had with all the ISAs. I know Campbell, you were there. The first time I said, where is your mind at? You're working for, you know, someone. And what is your, um, what does success mean to you? And so I did the pep talk, what I need to do. Um, and then from there, a second module, I think is going to be all about, um, you know, what is a calendar looking like like if you don't have it if it's not on your calendar it doesn't exist i'm a firm believer on that so what does your calendar look like do you have the phone appointment set on your calendar plus your boss's calendar right um and and that's another module that we have the third module that we have is role play um you know objection handling i want to hear them i want to see what they're saying what they're talking about i think it's very important to sit down if what when you are not and I say, and you're doing this for your own self, you need to role play, look at yourself in the mirror, role play before you pick up the phone and start dialing role play. Um, we also do types of um, types of leads and how, how to handle each one of them, right? That's another module. Um, the importance how to manage and understand the smart plans, I have Chime. So we need to make sure how do we get people back to uh, reply to us? And we've got about, I think 72% return emails from the emails that we send out. Um, what are we saying in those emails for people to respond back to us, right? Um, I had some guy text me this morning saying, I love the emails that you send me. Can you please tell me more about new construction homes, right? Um, newsletters. So we talk about newsletters. These are the things that you can do as an individual agent um, for your business. Uh, you can also uh, figure out uh, text uh, and email the scripts Right. If some, if we're dialing and they don't answer, say for example, I have a phone appointment set, and my ISA is doing a live transfer over to me, um, and that person doesn't answer the phone. Now they did have a phone appointment, but they're not answering their phone. They must have been caught with something like caught in a meeting or whatever. So what do we do? Our next thing is we do a text, um, I, um, you know, to them and let them know, hey. You know, we had an appointment set um, when it's a good time to reach out to you again. So we cover a lot of things, um, you know, in this program, but these are the things that you can do um, uh, to really focus. Our, our one ISA, lead ISA sets about uh, 20 to 25 phone appointments for me every week. Um, so we have one lead ISA and two other ISAs. We have a team of ISAs. So we total three, we're looking for one more. So each one is setting about 10 to 20 appointments, uh, phone appointments for me, so you can see how busy we get. So if I can't answer it all the time because I'm in appointments, my director of ops is the next person that answers the calls or my um, daughter who's our, my business partner that answers the, the live transfers. So that is like uh, the process that we do, the workflow of an ISA or you should be lead conversion, lead um, generation, uh, lead follow-up, uh, that is that is all in our system. The next one that we're offering, which is lead follow-up, we're more engaging in what kind of materials we're gonna be sending out, like mailers, right? Um, sending out letters or postcards, or you know, uh, are they on a drip campaign, things of that sort. So I'm, I'm still uh, building that uh, course out, but this is a workflow of an ISA, um, just as an over, over, overview of it, Marcus. Yeah, and I think a lot of people um, can take advantage also that you have other options. They don't have to go straight into the ISA type of course. You have uh, group coaching as well as a um, office hours where they can just come in and ask questions. Yes, Sunny, thank you. You're really excited about this. So where are you, Sunny? Um, I'm reading the chats here. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so um, I do want to talk about, okay, so group you know, really a lot of people want individual coaching for this. And then so I thought, okay, group coaching, people might not want to share too much about their business. So we might just do individual coaching. We have had requests for that. So that might change into individual coaching soon. Um, but feel free to add, you know, text me and let me know what you guys prefer. I'm okay with that. And then office hours where you guys can just come in, ask me questions. Um, and, you know, we can chat and that's about it. Like, 
I'll, I'll give you a heads up on what is coming up soon, you know, which training program you um, you want, you want to join, whatever. What It's just for you guys to have a conversation with me. But the real, um, to get your hands in the dirt, to play around, would be the ISA training program to really see numbers and really see, you know, the conversions and the conversations. That one is a good program. Well, you know, I'm, the reviews you, you, you've heard um, just being on day one. Another thing is if you are, um, if you do have an ISA or an ISA team, guys, please make sure you have an NDA signed to protect you and your business. Your systems, your models are not shared with anyone else. You, you just want to make sure of that. That's the first thing I taught on my day one. That's smart. Um, Neil asks, what type of market are you in, Janky? A buyer or seller or balanced? It's a balanced market here. Some say more. It's a seller's market. I don't know. It's the way you look at things. I don't look at it that way. I look at it like what's going to be um, good for my client is how I look at it. Open floor, guys. This is your opportunity to ask questions. This is your opportunity. Jakey's not always on the mastermind. So, Neil, go ahead. Yeah, uh, Jenky, thanks a lot for sharing what you've you've shared. It's very insightful. I appreciate it. Um, one of the things that we, much like uh, the lady in BC, we're in Ontario, Canada, just about an hour's north, uh, hour, hour north of Toronto, and we have probably a week and a half, two weeks of supply of uh, listings at any any time. So. Uh, back to the same thing, you know, we have an abundance of buyers uh, of property that we recently um, showed. We didn't put an offering on it, but it had 50 offers. So, you know, the concept of, uh, and that's why I'm asking the question, because I'm just trying to wrap my head around the approach, the context, all that kind of stuff to see if, in fact, some of, if we're, we're offering lists for buyers and we're complicating our uh, business model by adding more buyers, for example, even though, yes, some of them are sellers, and I think we all know that some sellers behave as sellers first and buyers second, and, and conversely, uh, it occurs as well. We, we really don't want buyers, to be honest. So do you have a certain angle um, when it comes to marketing for sellers? And I think, uh, Linnea, you were talking maybe about, uh, somebody was talking about you know, going after seller listings or seller leads, um, just trying to, you know, get a handle on I got the, the approach, I got right? Yeah. 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 I, I totally get what you're asking. So basically some of the approaches that we've used that has worked for us, one is um, circle prospecting. There's not much expired listings that we get here, um, but we do get a lot of, of, you know, maybe, maybe FISBOs. Um, we try to go, go after FISBOs. Um, and I use Red X for that, you guys, and they the data is really up to date. So my main thing is I do circle prospect, my ISAs do circle prospecting three times and we have listings and we wanna get more listings in that neighborhood. I don't know if you know, um, a couple of months ago, I posted where I got a street text lead and it was a seller lead. So we converted that seller lead in that neighborhood. Then we did circle prospecting. We got one more seller out of it uh, in that same neighborhood, okay? And then from that, we got another seller and a buyer. So now it's six transactions out of that one ST lead, a street tax lead that we got, right? We got six transactions out of it from that same neighborhood um, because we're looking at a buy or sell. Um, so what we did, and how did we get those other, uh, other three listings? The, the way we got the other three listings was we did circle prospecting in that neighborhood. Now, how did we do it? We did coming soon. We did um, active, hey, our property is active on the market. We did pending and then we did sold. So we called them about four times in that whole 200, um, uh, we call the 200 um, homes in that radius, um, half a mile, of one mile radius, whatever it was. Um, so we, we hit them four times. And when they know, they're gonna engage with you. Uh, when they know you, the second and the third time you call them, they're gonna start engaging with you. Um, and they're going to start asking you questions. Hey, what did that home sell for? Can you give me some information? Yeah, of course, I'd love to. What kind of home Donkey, do you have? Did y'all supplement with, with physical mail when you were circle prospecting or calls only? Calls only. And then what we did is when we went pending, we sent out a postcard. And when, when we went sold, we sent out a postcard as well. And then um, a month later, we sent out a letter saying, hey, we have buyers looking in your area. 
That is the only way, Neil, that has worked for us so far over here. And if you don't have the ability to circle prospect, I always say use your resources wisely. Um, what I do is I use a title company. I'll take the house that I have and I'll ask them to, to sit there and basically take the data for three years of ownership or longer. They'll send you, they can email me a mailing list. I'll let there. They scrub it down for you. Cost me like $3 and 50 cents. You can't hire a person for that. So when they, when they say balling on a budget, figuring out a budget, how to do things, once you get that list, you can either go do door hangers or you can actually go ahead and mail out. But instead of being in a division of 200 homes and wasting your money on 200 homes for four mailings, you turn around and might narrow down to about 37 homes. And that gives you four or five mail outs to them that are more effective because they're actually in a position to sell. A lot of the title companies are positioning themselves for AI. So not only are they looking for those most likely to sell, they also have what they call the um, empty nesters and stuff like that for people who've been there long enough that the kids are out of the home. So, you know, everybody's got title reps and whatever. The, the failure is nobody uses them like they should. So that that that's one of those weekly things or once a month things you should put on a list to do because they work for you. And like I said, you're not getting somebody for $3.50 an hour anywhere else like that for that purpose. Hey, Neil, I just wanted to reach circle back to you for a second. So um, I appreciate your comment there, Leon. In where we are, we have uh, privacy, like no call lists. Um, and so we have to be very careful about approaching people and getting their personal information, especially in BC, Canada. So Neil, I don't know if you're in the same boat being in uh, Ontario, um, but I will say that um, my home value ad used to perform extremely well for me where I got, you know, a number of listings my first year with street text out of that particular ad. And I get a lot of people contacting me in regards to their home value because I'm still running that ad. But at the same time, I'm not getting the amount of leads like in order to go and list someone's home that I was. And I know it takes time, right? Because people, we have such a shortage of listings here. They don't know where to go. Eventually they will sell, right? Um, but Neil, if you want to keep in touch, if both of us want to um, try some new buyer lead ads to see if that changes our game a little bit, we can stay in contact with each other just to see if that's working. If you're up yeah. for it. I love that. Thank you. Sure. And so, remember, buyer, buyers can be referred out. So if you're running an ad and you don't want that, refer them out. That's future money in the bank. I get probably five or six referrals that pay me a year just for something like that. So don't just say it's not a buyer and throw it away. Somebody somewhere will take it. Right on. Um, <clears throat> may I ask another question? Janky, with respect to your follow-up with the ISAs, we, we tried... Uh, having some ISAs out of the Philippines at one time as well. We have uh, five admin in the Philippines right now that we run our entire operation. Um, they're the base. I mean, they're fantastic. Yes, uh, yeah, the longest one uh, has been with us for over 10 years now. So it's it's been working well. It's a great model. Um, I'm, I'm just wondering about the ongoing uh, follow-up for those leads that have a much longer runway. Are they strictly your offshore ISAs that are managing those um, communications or do you, do you integrate that with any kind of automation, whether it's through, uh, you know, bomb bomb or things like that? Like what, what do you do for the long term? So for the long, leads? yeah, for the long term leads with a buyer or seller, we have a follow up system for each of our ISAs to call. And they go in that particular bucket. Those of you who have Chime will know that they, you can create different pipelines. And each of our ISAs have a pipeline. So if there is um, a bad lead or a cold lead or someone working with a realtor goes in that particular pipeline, right? Um, and then every um, two weeks, we have our lead ISA follow up with them. <clears throat> and she'll follow up and she'll say, all right, you know, what, what is their story? She'll look into the notes and she'll say, okay, what is, what is really going on with this lead? Are they ready to buy? Are they not ready to buy? Are they just done with buying? What is, what is the story there, right? Um, and we would get all that information in the notes. The notes are so important for our, for our team so anyone can read. Because I have about 12, I, um, 12 VAs. We're adding about three more on this week. So that'll be almost, you know, 12, about 15, 16 um, VAs on our team by the end of the week, uh, by the end of the, by the end of October. 
So I can't manage all of them. So our director of operations, and now she has an assistant director of operations who sees the entire operation, who then uh, you know, has a meeting, a department meeting with our ISAs and asks the ISAs, hey, where is this lead? Well, they really go into the nitty gritty of the leads. We have over about 8,000 leads in our database, right? So each of those leads will be contacted somehow, somewhere uh, by somebody for, on our team. Hey, Jenki. Question is, if you have if you have an ISA, do that that means you are only going on appointments or taking up phone appointments? Does the ISA do everything else for you? Yes, my job um, is to work on the business, and that is something I'm such a firm believer in. I go on listing appointments, I go on buyer appointments, I do not go on inspections. Um, I also don't talk to the, and then I go to hand the keys. My job is to negotiate, to write offers, um, and even my transaction coordinator now writes offers for us. So. Again, my main job is just to go to the listing appointments and the buyer appointments. And everything can be leveraged out after that. Yaki, with your transaction coordinator doing that, do you have laws that prevent that from happening in California? No, we don't, but I do have a certified TC that handles, and she is a licensed transaction coordinator with EXP as well. Um, are they a licensed agent? They are. Yes. Yeah, I think we have to have the same thing in Georgia. We can't form that to someone who's not an agent. They don't have to be licensed here in California, though. But I chose to get a so she can write the offers for me, um, and she can write the listing agreements for me. Are they in the Philippines also? No, she's local. Local. Okay. Thank you. Uh, can I? Sorry, sorry to keep asking all these questions, but um, I, I wonder: Have you tabulated the conversion time frame from? your leads that transact? Um, it... Yes, so Lorraine, if you're here, she can be the one telling you that. We just talked about it yesterday because we had two um, uh, uh, street texts that we closed within a month from them coming into the system. Um, we closed and wrapped them up, uh, I think just last week. And if Lorraine is here, she can certainly answer that question. But usually, um, you know, in our Chime database, we have uh, like on Wednesday afternoons, we will have a team meeting specifically regarding this matter. Like what is the conversion ratios? What are the emails open? What are the email responses? What are the what is the um, rate on that, right? Um, um, where do we see replies coming in? What kind of material, what kind of newsletters or information are we sending out that we're getting a response from? Um, so I don't know if she's here, but she can certainly you know, answer that question for you or I can definitely PM you later. And what, what do you track it with? Like, I hear you referring to uh, a system that I don't, I've never heard of before. Chime. It's a Chime? Chime. Yeah, it's a Chime CRM. I'll just put it in the. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah. I ask a question. We all still here? Something happened. Zoom broke down for a second. Oh, hey. Yeah, sorry. Here. Can you hear me? Right here. Yeah, hey. Yep. Hey, Jenki. Um, thank you so much for all the, uh, the valuable information. I'm really trying to incorporate this well, you know, in my business and what you're actually doing. <clears throat> um, so I would love to like set up a consultation and sort of go through showing you like what I'm doing and like maybe like, try to like, get your help and maybe sign up with your program. Is that something that could work out or? Yeah, definitely. I know you've texted me, uh, uh, send me messages twice, uh, three times. So <laughs> yes, definitely. Yes. And we've been talking back and forth. But yeah, let's set up a time. I can certainly talk to you kind of deep dive into what is it that you're looking for, and then take you in from there and say, okay, this is where I see, um, you know, where you might need some help. Um, we are also going to be doing some business planning. Um, for all the agents that obviously have signed up with the ISA program, because we want to make sure that their goals are met. So we're going to do like a business planning clinic with their ISAs, um, you know, I believe uh, fourth or fifth, fifth week, um, and really find out what are their goals um, and, you know, find out, have a conversation, have them have a conversation with their, um, you know, realtors. And then uh, like Campbell would have a conversation with their ISA and figure out what is it that they're looking for in terms of numbers. So all of that information for sure, I'll talk to you. So that's something else that we can also discuss for him. Hey, Jenki. Okay. What would you say, like taking it way back to the actual ad creation, um, what would you say would be a good starting buyer style of ad to run uh, just in general? 
you know, the one, the one ad that really well worked very well for us is I thought about what is it the buyers, what is it that a buyer is looking for? Um, a lot of people, a lot of buyers here are looking for a bedroom, bathroom downstairs. So then I went to Ira, I believe that that time Ira or somebody was, oh no, Jonathan, they were the ones doing the custom ads, right? And so we did a custom ad geared towards one bedroom, one bath um, homes in Fremont. And that ad really worked well for me. Now, regarding all the other ads, there was another ad that said, um, I don't remember, it was so long ago, Marcus, but it, it was totally geared towards um, buyers. If you, if you want to bring up my ads, I can tell you, but that has been long yep. running. So you've um, got Parkmont Homes with Main Floor Master List, Fremont, Fremont. Homes List, and yeah. then Fremont Homes with the Main Floor Master List. Yeah, so the Main Floor Master and the Fremont Homes List really works well for us, and well, used to as well. For, and they've been here the longest. The one with Fremont Homes with the Main uh, Floor Master List, that has worked awesome for us. Well, I can look. I mean, the crazy thing is I look at your ad, you don't turn it off. I, a lot of people that play, play with split testing and A-B testing so often, and then they just you know, they never have any consistency. You've spent 4,700 on this ad yeah. at $20 a day. You've spent $6,152 on this second ad. Um, and that's $20 a day. And then you have this $9 a day. So you're, you're not just turning it off and on, turning it off and on. You're just leaving it going all, all the time. Yeah, I, I don't, like I said, I don't mess around with what's working for me. Why mess around with something that's working for you? Leave it alone, you guys. Um, I don't do testings. I don't do any of that. I just, um, you know, I do want to do some custom ads. I think um, Ira or uh, Logan. Logan's yeah, going to be your main man on Logan, that one. Yeah, Logan. Um, uh, uh, Lorraine will be in touch with you, but we do want to create uh, one custom ad again. Um, but I leave it alone. I, I we just leave it alone. Now I think you'd be surprised to know that Janky. Um, as much as I I thought like I was. I was taken aback. I'm like, you don't use bomb bomb video. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of videos out there, Marcus, on YouTube that our social media um, and marketing managers have put out. Um, we've started our YouTube videos, so just more focused towards, um, you know, um, uh, realtors uh, showing them more about w what success stories I've had and, and things of that sort. But other than that, I don't do bomb bomb as much as I should, um, you know. And some of you guys have luck with it. I just like to pick up the phone and call. I'm kind of like old fashioned in that sense, but that has worked for me, right? Um, so I'm not gonna change that, but that is really just pick up the phone and talk to the buyer, talk to the seller and you know, sell yourself. Sell, let them know who you are and then hear their story. Come from that contribution angle, like listen to them. You don't chatter about yourself. Let them tell you who they are and what they are and why they want what they want. That's so good. And I think a lot of people just don't know what to say uh, when they pick up the phone. They're just like, Marcus, tell me what I should say or what I, what I should, you know, I get a lot in even the, the initial email reply, like, what should I say? What should my script be? And I think that's a, that's a healthy place to start. Right. But I also think the speed to lead, like I, I was spoken in the sense of when you have leverage and scalability like yourself, that speed to lead is of utmost important because now it's top of mind. You get that conversation to begin when you don't, and it's just you, obviously video is gonna be very helpful because you can't be there every second because you're doing all these other tasks. So that's that's the idea. I think I think often what I find we all need is a little bit of role play and script practice to just, you know, cause I'm not doing it. I'm not out there in the market. Neither is Ira, or Troy or Logan or anybody else. We're, you know, we're just kind of sh highlighting what we've seen work for people. But I think we need all to be in an environment where we can just role play a little bit and kind of, you know, fill out the situation because you've always been really good at just matching that person's personality yes um, and their tonality and their voice and kind of you you're really good at reading their disc profile too and a lot of people should probably start there and i actually have taught that and that's a uh, one thing that is going to be that is in our isa training courses is that how does the when talking your um your isa should know exactly what to say how to say it to the person on the other side and listen to their tonality and listen to, you know, what they're, they want, right? And that's something that even if you don't have an ISA, I, I would like to say to you who's picking up the phone and dialing is that listen to how they're talking to you. Look at the speed, the rate of speed, their language. What are they saying? How are they saying it to you? And then from there, you can then 
um, continue your conversation. Don't play, don't make it scripted, have a conversation. That's what I say. Yeah, and I think ultimately you're not selling, you're consulting. You're consulting, yeah, that's true. And like Leon said, you know, you if you don't have the bandwidth, you are the person to do it. I mean, you will build up that bandwidth once you, you know, um, start closing a few deals here and there. Then, like you said, run it like a business. Put some money away to invest in growing your business. That's exactly what I did. I didn't have all this and I didn't have extra money to, you know, I, I'm the only breadwinner in my home, by the way, you guys. So, you know, my husband is on my team. My uh, daughter is on our team. So I'm the, this team is it for us, you know? Um, so how do we do it? We treat it like a business, you know? Uh, and that's how it should be. Look at your numbers. Your numbers are the main thing. And I get a report of my numbers every couple of days from my director of ops. You should be keeping a, a very close eye on your numbers. All right, Jenkins, I'm gonna throw this one at you. Cause I, I can tell you honestly, I hate for anybody to control my life. So for you, I hear you always say you get the life handovers and stuff like that. So obviously, you know, there's a time block going on. But as far as when your ISAs are working and they're making appointments, do they set a hard appointment or do they set the initial appointment and you come back and confirm it? Because I do share a calendar on the work side, but I don't want my personal life out in there. So um, are you actually like hard booking the appointments is what they do for you or do you confirm the final appointment for your appointments? No, they do it all. They um, make the phone appointment for me. And then when it's time for that phone appointment, they'll ask me, are you ready for a live transfer? It's already set on my calendar. So we have different calendars. We have the team calendar and I have my personal family calendar that they don't get to see, but my director of ops does get to see that um, because she needs to know where I am, you know, with who, and she can, you know, let the team know, right? So she is the key man on my team, key hire on my team. You have to have at least two to three key men in your team, right? Um, and, and she gets to see everything and anything, any time of the day. Um, but mostly, uh, you know, they do set hard appointments for me. They also set uh, phone appointments for me. And then we do the live transfer. I talk to them about knowledge about the market. So what I do is I, you know, share guide, I guide them, I educate them, and I share market knowledge with them. Uh, that is my job when they come on the live transfer. How can you tell it's a live transfer, Jenki? Do you know? Do you know right away? How does that work? So they'll text me WhatsApp. They'll WhatsApp me. We're completely on WhatsApp. They'll text me, "Hey, um, boss, are you ready for a live transfer?" And I'll say, "Yep, let's go, let's go, let's go." So you know, we get ready for the live transfer. They're in a good mood. They're talking to the buyer or the seller, and um, they'll just put me on. They'll put them on. So we do it through Ring Central. Um, soft phone. So they'll put me on a pause and um, they'll go back to the lead and then connect us. Do you say WhatsApp? WhatsApp? WhatsApp. Yep. Business WhatsApp. That's what I have. Sunny, you had a question. Sunny. Sunny. Yo, Manny. what's up? Sunny's here. Yo, uh, yo, Manny. Yo, yo, I'm from Hawaii. Aloha. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, really quick for Janky. Um, why did you choose Chime over any other CRM? And I'm, um, I don't know what this cat's name, Fahim. I agree with him. I'd like to have a consultation with you and see if I could take your smart plans from you. If that's, <laughs> if that's okay, you can, tell you're, you can tell you're very sympathetic. sympathetic Just like that, keep it. I love it. Yeah. yeah. We could sit down and we could definitely chat, obviously, through Zoom. Okay. Um, um, in regards to um, my smart plans, obviously, those are very geared to California. Um, you know, so I can. Oh, yeah. And why did I use Chime? So why did I go to Chime? The reason why I went to Chime was because I feel that I've looked at so many CRMs over the years. Right. I was with um, Firepoint. I was with... Um, a top producer, I was with a couple of other ones. I just couldn't connect as much as I'm connecting with Chime. Chime no. has the smart plans, Chime has the, um, you know, the, the pipelines, has the newsletters, has the, uh, just everything that I needed. I just didn't have the time and um, space to really figure it all out. Um, and then having a database of almost close to seven to eight plus thousand leads in our database now, I just look at 
at the overview of everything every single day. I do look at my database, don't get me wrong. I'm not just, everything is to my director of ops. She does give me a report of things, um, but I do peek in every now and then to see, and it's right on my phone. Um, and I see if there's a flaw, if someone's not, um, you know, there's a link for showing appointments like that, you know, um, uh, the buyers click on that and say, I want to see this particular property. And so for that, if I see that there are no appointments are made, I go back to my um, ISAs and say, you know, kind of make some noise, rattle their cages a little bit and say, okay, how come nobody has talked to this client um, about setting this appointment up? So, right. yeah, it's very, it's very focused for me. And our team, so that's why I love Chime. Do you use Chime Homebot as well, Jakey? Huh? Do you use Homebot as well? Uh, Homebot, yes, we do. A very rare do we use Homebot because evaluations here are completely off for me. Um, there was a townhome that we just we're going to list again, Street Tax Lead. We're listing it on Friday, and Homebot had given them an evaluation of one point two, when in reality it's nine hundred thirty nine thousand. So. It's a little skewed for us here. Do you think I could ask, I, I made a uh, comment on the chat there, just going back to the different ads, if anyone's having success with the 12 tips for sellers. Um, Ira mentioned that there was a couple of reports of, of realtors having success with that, but because I was getting 100% 100 numbers for every single lead that was coming in, that's kind of my plan using that ad moving forward. I just wanted to get some feedback from everyone to see if it was working for them. I closed a deal off of it. <laughs> nice. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. She just started chatting with me. Like after she opened the and reviewed the 12 tips, she just started chatting. I chatted back. I went there for an appointment, got the listing and sold it. So Can I ask you what you're I, using for your email drip campaign on that one. Uh, that was um, actually, I think on my funnel, I have just, um, the 12 tips. It's very simple. It's nothing like my seller one that has, you know, a whole bunch of stuff, but, um, uh, just the 12 tips. And then I have another one through follow-up boss, um, that I could possibly share. Um, but it's just main, mainly like a keep in touch one. And then, um, that way I could just stay in front of them and it has like little memes and stuff about real estate. That's awesome. Do you have any idea uh, how many leads like to get that one? You had to yeah, get see, a ton, a ton. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because it remember it happened like two days later, <laughs> and you know it was so immediate. I was like, oh my god, I love this ad. <laughs> but you know, and that's the thing is like any of these ads. It's just if you're in the right place at the right time, you know, in those people's lives, then, you know, you're, you're going to have success. You just need to be there and you can't be there if you don't run the ads and if you don't, you know, and I'm horrible at follow-up. So I can't really preach that. Janky can, they're amazing. <laughs> hey. But when they reach out, I definitely chat back, you know what I mean? And that's just what I do. But yeah, there, there was no magic with that, but it did take a lot. And I don't really like to look at um, the conversion rate because mine is very, very low. But when I look at my ROI, it's very, very high. And that's what I care about. I mean, am I making money on what I'm spending? You know, it doesn't make sense. So that's how I always look at things. I add up everything that I spend on a program, including all the little programs like HomeBot and everything else that you have to do to get it. And then how much did I make? You know what I mean? And if it makes sense, um, then I keep it. And Street Text, I'm right now at 435% ROI. Not too bad. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Hey, I want to give Janky the last minute because she's got to go to another meeting. So Janky, before... Before you go, because I know you need to leave in about a minute, um, wrap it up real quickly. You got the floor, and then we'll continue on with the 12 tips conversation. Awesome. So thank you, everyone, for you know really engaging with me today. Um, all the links are there in the chat box. Um, if you guys do want to talk to me, I'm always here on P um, Private Messenger on Facebook. Um, and obviously, here on Street Text, either myself or my director of ops definitely answers you guys. So. Um, we are here, I'm here actually to give back to the community whenever I can, as much as I can. So 
uh, you know, I've been there where I've been totally lost. Um, and I, I know some of you might feel that way with the with abundance of leads coming your way. But again, it's a mindset thing, guys. And it's really putting your systems into play um, and really focusing on the lead conversion and the lead follow ups, you guys. Um, and like I said, I'm here for you. So um, definitely, you know, plug in our systems, uh, you know, and it, it, it works great, you guys. So thank you so much, Marcus, Ira, Jonathan, Troy, for always being here to support me. And of course, Stephen, you guys are the best. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Shanky. Bye, guys. All right, keep on going, guys. So we were talking about the 12 tips, but we can open up the floor to anything at this moment. You know, it is the top of the hour, so I'm sensitive to some of you have to go, but we kind of just have fun at the end here and just open us up to anything you'd like to talk about. I'll, I'll chime in quick just on the 12 tips because I was on a separate webinar with Josh Shanley and people reporting using the 12 tips ad. The timelines are the same. And two of the common factors for both Greg and Shay who have had success with the 12 tips is their ads were on and they kept running. They didn't turn them on and off and on and off. Like I think at Greg had converted one and he had spent $400 on that ad across three months and his ROI is off the charts. We calculated that at about 34 times what he had spent. So for both of them, it was just, there's still the timeline part of it. The lead came in three months prior. The lead came in two months prior. The lead came in, you know, I just had, um, was it Greg this morning messaged me saying he just got another listing from the 12 tips this morning. Um, so the, it's the timelines are all the same, that 90 to 120 day turnover. So just because they're submitting for the 12 tips doesn't mean that I'm selling right now. But obviously, if I'm asking for 12 tips, I'm thinking about it. To me, that's a pretty hot lead in the sense that why would I be asking for 12 tips about how to sell my home? So it's just about that soft lead and how can I help you? How can I add value? Hey, do you know equity is quite crazy right now in homes in this area? So all of them have just have extensive drip campaigns and some of them even have some mailers going out when they can get the address. So it's really that key to the follow-up. It's, it's the value that they're coming in for and then it's how you deliver on that value. So those um, success stories that I was hearing based on that ad I mean, their ROI, like Wendy said, they, we calculated the ROI because Greg's comment on our webinar was, well, I'm not going gangbusters yet. <laughs> that was his comment. And Josh was like, hey, look, this is what you've spent. This is what you've made in commissions. This is gangbusters. Like your ROI is off the chart right now and you're just three to four months in. So it's really understanding that concept. Right. And they, and they are a potential seller. So, I mean, sending them a quick video about your move once program, you know, would be ideal because if they are thinking of selling, they're probably scared of selling because they don't know if they're going to be able to find something, you know, that they're going to like. And if you, you know, talk about the rent backs and whatever you guys do in your area, um, you know, that's a good video to send out to them. If you want to add that into your funnel or drip and then, um, like if you do something special, like I have a mobile, you know, she shed that has staging stuff. So I do staging and, you know, I make sure that we get professional photos, drone video, 3d tours, you know, so I kind of explain all that in a different video and I'm not saying, you know, shove them all in their face right away, but like, you know, every once in a while they are potential sellers and they may want to see what you do. And then maybe, you know, they'll reach out eventually when they're ready. And then we also pull them up on tax record to see if we can find their home because they usually just give us phone number and email. Uh, and if we can find their home, then we add them to HomeBot so that they can see their value. Here's what's funny about that 12 seller tips. I got a, so, so the win off of that was I got a win and it wasn't from what the 12 tips ad was running. I always say I look at something for what it does and think what else can I do with it. So um, after I had a couple of realtors download my 12 tips ads and I sent them the invitation to come to Street Tech, um, I went ahead and finally branded it and um, got everything set up where now when you download it, it's got my branding. But for all the seller leads I have, I went ahead and sent them the 12 seller tips and I got a listing because of that. So the, the thing is, I always say, if, if you're paying for something, use it. So, you know, Canva lets you do it for free, brand that thing, send it out to everybody in your database that's a seller, 
And even if you've got just family or friends in there, you could just say, hey, do me a favor. If you got someone, you know, sell and forward this. Because, you know, engagement is based on them seeing you and knowing you're there and getting the touches. So the 12 seller tips got me a listing. I got a condo out of it. And it's, it's hilarious because it actually goes active next week. So um, that, that, that was funny. And um, I was wondering, Marcus, if you guys are building a 12 buyer tips, because if, if we're starting to see people migrate over to the buyer side of things, why would we not want to have something to tell them the biggest mistakes to avoid? And, you know, like we say, we're giving something of value out the gate without asking for anything. Um, I'd be more than happy to beta test that. And I don't even run buyer ads, but I would for that. I like that. John, you want to? Talk about that. <laughs> Sound like you wanted to say something, or not? We'll get Logan to build it. I think it's a good idea. Yeah, we'll get. Uh, we'll talk to Maddie and Logan, and uh, I think that's a good one. We should definitely run with it. The action items today are fast and furious. There's a lot. There's good ones, and I think that the cross value that we were talking about right there is so key. You have the 12 sellers tips. Everyone has it. This is something you can do. This is high value. You can send it to every single seller lead that you have got from your database. In fact, you can send it to all your buyer leads. You can say like, listen, I get it that some people are have a home to sell before they can buy. And, or some people are looking to buy before they sell. Here's the, here's the 12 tips. And uh, so that's, that's a really appropriate way of, of responding. And make sure you use all your other systems too, because Janky talked about that. Set up the technology to work for you. And the key there is that when you are using tools like uh, HomeBot, some of the valuations might be inaccurate, but that's okay because they're still sending a CMA or a value report to them. They're still getting something to their inbox. And if they get, if you get a response saying, hey, this value seems way off, well, that's an awesome conversation starter. Now you as the experienced agent get to go in there and agree with them and say, yeah, absolutely it is. And so, yeah, so every time you are using the systems that you have available to you, you are just taking your business that much further in the right direction where you are now uh, getting to work on the high value stuff and being targeted. I thought the, the, the idea you gave earlier, Leon, was brilliant. Like it's such a simple thing. Go to your title company. When you go and look at a, a home that you've just listed, or maybe someone else has just listed in a neighborhood that you want to work in, just get them to get you a list of all the people that have owned a home for more than, what do you say, three years? It's going to narrow down that list from 200 homes to 37 homes. Now you can be super targeted. So if you can't pick up the call because it's, you know, the phone and call them because it's, you know, it might be against the, the law in your state or province. You can still send them a mailer and include the 12 seller tips, include a quick summary of this home that just got listed. And so now you are the agent that's having a conversation with them. I think that's so brilliant. There's so many really powerful strategic action items that are helping you work smarter, not harder, but are getting that much better. And that's really the ethos of everything we do, which is how do we put you in a position where you are doing the 20% of activities every single day that are driving 80% of the outcomes for your business. You can do the other 80% too, but the 20% are the ones that you want to make sure you don't ever miss every single day. And, and yes, yeah, so this has been brilliant. Uh, one, other, one, other, one other thing you can have in there also with the 12 seller tips. I tell people all the time, I will sell you a house standing in the checkout line at Safeway. I don't care where I'm at because you're waiting, you got nothing to do. Go ahead and since it's a PDF format already, save it in your phone. No matter where you're at, you're on the go. And someone says something about, selling their house say hey do me a favor i got something i'd love to give you text it to them or you email it to them right out of your phone you've got it send it i mean it's just you know we, we sit there and, and and janky said it earlier and it's been mentioned i said all the time we have a tendency to get away and forget that the business so <laughs> have to do 24 7 but if i'm only going to work two or three hours a day let me make that two or three hours the best two or three hours. Be productive, be effective, get it out there. So, you know, rather than say, oh, I'll send it when I get home, and then you get home and you forget or something comes up, you got it on the spot. Send it. You, you have so many resources that are free that can, you know, you always hear me say free 99. So why not be productive and, and make that free 99 make money number one? Because that's how I get a lot of my business, referral business, stuff like that. But I've got what I need right there. I've got them on there. 
if I send you a text and your phone don't chirp, you gave me a bullshit number. I'll just say it like that. And, and I always say flat out, hey, what's the best email? Because I guarantee you, like I say, I've got five junk emails. And when I send you to the email you gave me, I bet it ain't the one that you signed up with most of the time. Yes, Leon, value stacking. I saw Linnea Carver add in the 12 seller tips guide into her email automation sequence on the home value ad. So that's a great value stack. And we should actually make that an automation piece, include it in there, because if you're giving them value and then you give them that 12 seller tips too on top of that value, you've just value stacked. And they're gonna look at that. They're gonna look at their value. They're gonna see all these 12 tips that they should take. Love it. So think of that idea too, because a lot of you are just staying with your nine month long drip campaign and not thinking outside the box. Sometimes if you work on the business, what you do is you turn off all your ads, reimagine the process, the integrations, the systems, your email drip, your SMS. Don't let it just be generic. If you're getting no results, it's probably because it's so generic and it's not connecting with that person. So yes, that's, you know, I know Ira's gonna be hosting the automations class soon. And I'm sure he'll go over Linnea Carver as an example in that automations class. Um, if she's up for it, but that's the kind of thing that you want to consider. You can add 12 solo tips. You can add an additional email about the value of community and interview a coffee shop owner. You can do all that, you know, so don't just get so is that, stagnant. Are, yep. Go sorry, ahead, sorry to cut you off, Marcus. Is that, are those 12 solo tips that are actually available on the, on the platform? Yeah. So yeah. when you, when you set up that 12 solo tips ad, it automatically sends out as an email and a PDF. Oh, I see. And then you can okay. download that PDF. You can customize that. And you can customize it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Got it. And I, and I want to say this, and everybody understand this, because there's more than one right way. But if you have not gone in and tweaked out additional things into the Street Text platform, then you're also missing another nugget. Because while it does run nine months, I honestly don't feel there's enough touches. And I don't blame street tech for that because the street tech job is basically to show us how to get ads out there to get engagement. Our job is to do things to help us build up and get the engagement. So if you haven't took a minute to go through and, and tweak Julie a little bit and add a few things, uh, to respond to a text every day. If they turn around and they respond to a text, I know they're no longer getting one. Based on just the average of averages, we know that um, they're going to look at a text 90% more than they will an email. So if snail mail's going out, you're having a database full of people not getting anything. So at that point, what you need to do is identify the folks who have responded to the text, and you need to sit down at a texting Tuesday or texting Thursday or whatever and start reaching out to get the engagement. When you say they're not responding to me, there's a reason. So identify the reason, you now have a solution, go do it, make it work, because they're going to respond to you if you reach out to them. No, I love that. Activities breed results, and really it does. You know, you keep planting seeds, you're going to have a harvest. Just remember to go back and follow up on that harvest, because I think a lot of people, they'll go and they'll plant seeds. I wrote that email this week about those uh, three prospectors. True story. You know, Tom and... Um, Oh, what was his name? Uh, not Eric. Uh, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but they go out there, they, they, they stake their claims, they suffer through the bitter cold of the northern Yukon winter. They come back a year later, they have to go back out there to reclaim it. All three of them could have done it. Only one guy did. And the next year, one of them was a millionaire. That's a true story. I think that sometimes we plant the seeds we go out there and we do the work, but activity is what breeds results. And be, be strategic with your activity. You can be strategic with your time. The, uh, but you, you got to do it. You, you got to actually get out there and, uh, and do the things and have fun. Like do the things that you enjoy doing a lot. If you, like, you want to create a she shed, go create a she shed. You know, if you want to uh, go have fun in your business, because business is a lot of fun. And then seeing ROI is just fuel to the fun. It's just, it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm literally getting paid to have fun. And so building and the relationships, connecting with people, that is a lot of fun. It's, it's just ended the Canadian Thanksgiving here this weekend. And so I just want to say I'm super thankful for you all. Really appreciate all the value you bring and, and what you've delivered to your clients every single day 
of, uh, of the week, every single day of the year. And I'm excited to see what you do in 2022. I'm excited to, you know, there are clients out there who don't know what's coming, but you're coming and you're going to really, really wow them and benefit them. And I'm just excited for their lives because of you. So uh, thank you very much for, for all that you guys do and, and bring and uh, add to this, this wonderful world. I'm going to end it there. Thanks. Everybody That's beautiful. For yes. Uh, one thing, your one thing that you're going to take away from this mastermind, go after it, post it in the group. There's a lot of, of tangibles to take away. The one thing. We'll see you at the next mastermind. Thanks, guys. See ya.